DHG here getting back into Alan Wake, one of my favorite titles, and this is episode four. I'm looking for my stopwatch. I can't. There it is. This is episode four. I was going to make this part of Halloween Horror, but I didn't really think it fit Halloween all that much. Even though it is a spooky title, it's more of a thriller than a horror game. If you like my content, subscribe. If you don't like notifications, turn them off. Alan Wake leaving his coffee thermoses everywhere. <sighs> He's had to buy hundreds of them because of that. Hunting your own food can save you money, that's why I'm going to be getting a license. As soon as I find somewhere to hunt, that is. Fucking area I lived in is filled with Karens, and if they hear a gunshot in the woods, oh my god, we're all going to die! Not going that way. Ouch. The gooey black shit. Manuscript page. The logging site was a mess. The modular office had been pushed off the cliff. Deputy Thornton climbed up from the wreckage excited, breathing hard from the exertion. Nobody there. It's weird. Don't you think that's weird? Bored, Mulligan let out a mighty snort. Hell, it's always weird, Thornton. Just a question of sorting out what kind of weird it is this time around. No rails on the steps. Oh man. Yeah, kick that shit. When Barry saw the darkness attack the visitor center, he <coughs> made him a believer. The men Al said he'd shot, they hadn't been just locals on crank. Somehow the world had changed. Like the channel had been switched without warning. You think you're watching a sitcom, and you're really watching a horror show. When the birds started attacking the cabin, Barry wasn't surprised. Just terrified. He's really got to keep... Better track of his thermoses.
pulls a hefty fuller. The darkness wears her face. Gotta get in there. There's a manuscript cake, uh, page. There we go. Shadow stirred and the wind picked up as I ran through the forest. I felt the dark presence turning its gaze toward me. Then the moonlight was blotted out by dark shadows that raced violently across the ground, moving too swiftly to be natural. Darkness gathered between the trees and melt again to reveal the Taken. No natural path had brought them here. Ooh, hunting rifle. What's over here? A whole lot of nothing. There's the chainsaw. Chunky son of a bitch. He was the guy that eats all the bacon before anybody can get any. wish there was an option to set priority to which shoulder you wanted the camera to be over. I can't stand it when it goes over the left. It just looks weird to me.
I still had to reach Barry at the cabin, but at least I was out of the woods. You're not out of the woods yet. agent's command froze me in place. I considered surrender. It was all falling apart anyway. I could give in, let someone else deal with it, but it felt all wrong. Cold instinct, his posture, the way he held the gun. He was no friend. Shots ringing in my ears, I leaped for the hole in the fence and stumbled into the darkness beyond. Bathroom ambush. Hmm. Kill. Do we got over here? Okay, <clears throat> I can stack. Well, I can't stand. Hunting rifle, I'll take that. Can't get in there.
He's not dead yet. Now he is. Is there anything down here? Thermos and a crow. Uh, looks like there's a manuscript page in here. There was no misunderstanding. Cauldron Lake was where Alice and I had stayed, but there was no cabin and no island. I was missing a week. What had happened to me? What had happened to Alice? I had to get her back. I couldn't face life without her. I knew one of those peckerheads was going to show up behind me. Flare gun was probably the best weapon I could imagine against the dark things I was facing. Oh, hello. Their shadows just like burn into existence. I thought there'd be something up here. Rose knew that Rusty was in love with her, and she liked him too. She liked him a lot. He taught her to dance, and life had certainly taught her the value of a man who was gentle. He treated her well, made her smile, made her feel good. But Rusty wasn't the prince of her dreams, and that tended to underline the unbearable truth. She was no closer to that Hollywood magic than he was. I find no allure in Hollywood. Filled with a bunch of degenerates and pedophiles. Kidnapper. You son of a bitch! Where's my wife? Enough horseplay, Wake! You deliver the manuscript, and you can have your woman back. Simple as that. I don't... Listen. Listen. I'm gonna need time to finish it. I still need to write the ending. I need... a week. It's not done? I need a week. Two days. The old Bright Falls coal mine is nearby. 
You can find it easy, city boy. The main building, there at noon. You bring the manuscript, you'll get your wife. If not, well, uh, get me. Yes, yes, I, I get you. Those birds are all over that place like shit on stink. Er, stink on shit. Barry had talked about birds over the phone. set his cabin on fire shooting flares up on it shisa Sorry for thinking you were having a psychotic episode, man. I sent Barry to the town to ask around about a man fitting the kidnapper's description. He'd go through the archives of the local paper. Perhaps he could learn something. Anything about the island and the cabin that had disappeared. The man wanted a manuscript. I had to try to write him one to get Alice back. For me, the supernatural had always been nothing but a metaphor for the human psyche, a tool to use in writing fiction. Now, it was happening for real, and I couldn't put a single word on paper. Barry Wheeler speaking. This is Rose. Rose? I found Mr. Wake's pages. Oh, you sweet, brilliant girl. Could you and Mr. Wake come get them? I live in the trailer park outside the town. We'll be there in less than an hour. See you soon. Have a great day. Hope you come back soon. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the old dear diner. Good girl. Music kind of reminds me of Silent Hill.
Previously on Alan Wake, Alice has been kidnapped. Alan, please help me. Alice? You'll do exactly what I say if you ever want to see your wife again. I can't tell anyone except my agent, Barry. Damn it, Barry. They'll kill her. You're my best friend, and I'm worried that you're not right in the head. The ransom is a manuscript I supposedly wrote that's coming true before my eyes. It happened just the way it was on that page. So dark. I have found only a few scattered pages. I want the entire manuscript. The deadline ah. is in two days. I found Good girl. How the hell did she get her hands on the manuscript anyway? I don't know. She's resourceful. I told you you were too hard on her. Listen, I found out all sorts of interesting stuff while I was digging around. Yeah. Mr. Wake, it's Sheriff Breaker. We have an FBI agent here, Agent Nightingale. FBI? He's anxious to see you. You'd better come to the station. Okay. I'll be right over, Sheriff. Let's make this quick, huh? Help you folks. Name's Randolph. I'm the manager. We're looking for Rose. Works as a waitress down at the diner. Rose, sure. Nice girl. Who wants to know? I'm Alan Wake. The writer, huh? I heard on the radio you were visiting. Well, I'll show you her trailer. That Rose, she's a nice girl. Always pays her rent on time. As I was saying, Al, I found all sorts of weird stuff from the local newspaper's archives. This place is crazy! Disappearances, mysterious deaths, urban legends come true, and, get this, most of this stuff takes place around Cauldron Lake. Well, you ain't wrong, mister. The Indians thought the lake was a doorway to the underworld. I'm the God-fearing type myself. I, I don't hold with that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Anyway, there was an island there owned by a guy called Thomas Zane. Now, some of the articles I found about him make him out to be a famous writer, but I ran a bunch of searches, couldn't find a single thing he wrote. Zane was heavily into diving, so much so that the place came to be called Diver's Isle. But the volcano under the lake erupted in 1970, and Zane went down with the island. Yeah, how about that? It was there in the morning, as if it had fallen from the sky. But it would take a tornado to lift something like that. We're damn lucky it didn't crush any of the trailers. Come on, mister. I'll take you to Rose's trailer. I got a food trailer out here. drowned in Cauldron Lake just a week earlier. They were lovers. Sure, Jagger's a local spook store. The scratching hag comes for you in the dark. Childish stuff like that. Anyway, Al, I'm just getting to the best part. All of the articles about this stuff were written by Cynthia Weaver. I asked around, and she's that crazy bag lady you met. What, the lamp lady? She can be a little loopy, but she's not homeless or anything. Yeah, anyway, she knew both Jagger and Zane before they both died, and she had some kind of a breakdown. He couldn't walk any slower. Well, mister, this here's Rose's trailer. You mind me asking what you want with her? We're just here to talk to her, pal. Wanna bang her brains out. That's what we're gonna do. Alan and Barry. Welcome to... to... Oh dear. Mr. Wake. I'm... I'm so glad you're here. Rose, you have my manuscript? Oh. Oh, yes. Yes. Please, come in. Hey, this is really good. Rose. Yes. My manuscript. I really need it. I understand. I know what you need. A muse to inspire you. Oh, for Barry. She doesn't have anything. Yeah. Uh, hey, Al. 
Oh, what's oh. Barry? What? What? skin. I'm too weak to stop it. You must turn the lights on. I promised I'd come visit you and your lovely wife. You must finish what you started. I insist. You must turn the lights on. I felt nauseous, hung over. Only anger kept me going. I can't tell reality from dream anymore, but it seems I have an imaginary editor to help me. She's an old woman in a funeral dress. I call her Barbara Jagger. She's very strict. I I'm writing faster and faster. My manuscript is being heavily revised. The edits are getting very aggressive, and each day there's less of me and more of her. I hate it, but I know she's right. She promises me I can save Alice this way. She knows more of this than I do, about the complex incantation I'm attempting, about this place. She's worked with another writer under similar circumstances, Thomas Zane. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I'm getting close. I can feel it. Rose took a day from me. I had less than 12 hours left to meet the kidnapper. All I could do was get Barry into the car, work something out once I got Bitch stole drive. my coffee. Yeah, what a lightweight. Welcome to the Oh Dear Diner. What can I get you today? Oh coffee. dear. I couldn't work up much hate for Rose. Something had used her to get to me and left its mark. My gun and flashlight were gone. I'd have to find a way to get Barry into the car as quickly as possible. There was no time to waste. Mr. Randolph liked Rose. That little smile she had. How she was still sweet when life had tried so hard to make her bitter. It wasn't any of his business what she did in her trailer. But those strangers, the writer and his smart-ass sidekick, looked like trouble. And they'd been in there for hours. Way past her normal bedtime. He reached for the phone and called the sheriff's station. I just stepped outside to catch a breath of fresh air. Let me tell you, the weather's getting heavy. Nights like this make me especially glad I'm here talking to you and not home in bed. Once once the weather takes a turn like this, I can't sleep at all. It's all tangled bed sheets and dark thoughts, punctuated by the occasional plunge into nightmare. <laughs> is it just me? Well, perhaps it is. But I hope I can make the night a little bit easier to get through. Caller, you're on KBF FM. Hey, hi, it's Walt Snyder. What's on your mind, Walt? Well... I am the way you are, but, well, uh, I can't sleep either, you know? Uh, I've just been staring out of the window here, trying to make sense of it all, but, uh, I ain't been thinking either, you know? I just... Well, you sound like a man with a problem, Walt. Something like that, Walt. Yeah. Well, you know, he's, uh, you know, Daddy's my best friend, and, uh, they let me on bail today. And now I'm just alone here at the window, you know, waiting. Man. And there's something in the air tonight, man. Uh, I was just 
just outside looking up at the sky above our broadcast tower thinking the same thing. What are you waiting for, Walt? I, I don't know. I, you know, something's gonna happen. You know, I gotta, I gotta, I, I think I better go. Well, Walt, uh, maybe... No, th thanks, Pat. Uh, well, good luck to you, Walt. Hang in there. Uh, let's take a little break, folks. This weather's really something else, huh? I can hear it calling in the air tonight. Hold on. Ah, oh, there he is. Oh, you're gonna get it now. He's like, what did you do with her? Let me smell your fingers. God knows what you've done to that poor girl. This is Agent Nightingale, FBI. Get him up, Hemingway. You're under arrest. You move a muscle, I'll unload right in your goddamn face. Stay right where you are, Slane. That's some Max Payne shit right there. What are I'm standing right here, you goddamn maniac. I hated to leave Barry behind, but there was no way I'd miss my appointment with the kidnapper. Agent Nightingale. Nightingale was an operation by the CIA. Uh, CIA. I can't remember what it was, though. It wasn't anything good, either. Oh, you can actually see the people standing on the uh, cliffs in this. darkness that wore Barbara Jagger's skin slept fitfully in the dark place that was its home and prison. It was hungry and in pain. It dreamed of its nights of glory when the poet's writing had called it from the depths and given it a brief, terrible taste of power and freedom. The rock stars had stirred it from the deep sleep the poet had sunk it back to in the end. When it sensed the writer on the ferry, it opened its eyes. Rose didn't know how the strange old lady got in her trailer, and she looked wrong somehow. The woman showed her teeth in an approximation of a smile and traced a finger down Rose's cheek. Pretty girl, she said. Rose felt as if she was falling asleep, but her knees didn't buckle. The crone spoke in a whisper, her words ice cold and dark in Rose's ear. As much power as the FBI thinks they have, as far as I know, they still have to adhere to what the sheriffs say in their jurisdictions. Uh, 
I don't even think we should have a federal police force. The FBI should just be disbanded completely. State police, local police, and sheriffs can handle it. That entire agency was only created for one thing, and that was to abuse power. didn't stand a chance. They were after a writer, not a monster. Uh-oh. this get all the way up here damn good cup of coffee uh, this is Jane Mulligan Thornton come in over uh, uh, Thornton here uh, Jane we got both Wheeler and Rose in custody <laughs> they didn't put up a fight or anything why they were hey come on, what you come on sit down and give me that Jane Mulligan here over uh, go ahead, Mulligan. Over. Uh, we got Wheeler and Rose here. Wheeler's drunk or hopped up on something. Speaking of which, that Fed had a pretty distinctive whiff of Oda Scotch about him. You know what I mean? Over. Uh, I don't have anything on that, Deputy Mulligan. Over. Well, whatever. Anyway, Rose is just being plain weird here. You better get Doc in to take a look at both. Over. Gotcha. You better get them here quickly. The uh, Fed's gonna want to interview Wheeler over. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet he does. Looks like they have a lot in common. Oh, we gonna out. <laughs> I imagine that the broadcast tower in the distance was part of the local radio station. Maine seemed like a decent guy. Perhaps he could give me directions to the coal mine. Unnatural shadows clung to the gate. The darkness that was after me was trying to stop me. I wouldn't get through without it. There was no power to the searchlight.
<laughs> that wiring looks good. that I got a flashlight back. Where's the gun? I guess that's it. to recognize the flashbang grenades. They were an ideal weapon for my situation. Oh yeah, they're awesome. Wait, was that a thermos? I thought I saw a thermos. I didn't even see you. Not that good at dodging. Gotta get good, son. That's where I'm going to be cutting this one off.